Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, I'll send in his fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Last episode, we happened to find and speak with, uh, Captain Ferrante. We informed him that we killed the person who happened to be killed, and he told us, yeah, there's a ghost ship wandering around and we want to do something about him, about it, so, uh, Go find out what you can about the person on about the uh, leader of the ship. But apparently, we already found out because it was uh, that guy in that tomb that we found in Nekataka. So now he wants us to go deal with a bunch of slavers. Yes. Not too keen on that, and neither is Seraphin. Anyway, we still got one more location here to look at. Let's see what's on the Radiant Court. May as well. Hmm. Peg Lake Performers, Radiant Court Sundries, Radiant Court Bar, and the Treasure Trove, and Ramasso's Emporium. This should be interesting to explore. Berna. Ah, I believe you're the one we actually need to speak with. I got it all right here. What can I stock you up with today? Show me what you have for sale. Okay, so you've got foods and the like. Not that I need any of them. All right. Did you hear? The gelded kestrel was lost at sea. From Goldfinch Fleet? Impossible with her wealth. Well, no one to bribe. Huh. The floating hangman gone. Now they're bones. Ah. So you're the captain the old port's been talking about. Aye, you do look like a fearsome sort. She slaps. Welcome to Dunnage. Mm. What are you having? I'll pour you a double. What do you know about the floating hangman? Her eyes go wide and she fumbles a bottle of spirits, spilling rum all over the counter. No one survives the floating hangman. Or so they say. It's the ship of the dead. You spy it on the horizon. You flee as fast as you can. Hmm. Yeah, also Pietro sent me to you. Ah, I guess the last concoction I made for him didn't do the trick then. Poor bastard. There's one last tincture recipe I know that won't kill him. Probably. It's called Andra's Bile. But I don't have all the ingredients in stock. You'll need a rotten agfish, an unripened palm stone, and a vial of fire kelp extract. Have him mix it all with a half tank of grog, and well, hope for the best. Where can I find the ingredients? Check the barrels around Lifter's Refuse for the rotten hagfish. You might be able to find unripened palm stone for sale somewhere in Radiant Court. She pours a drink, but rather than passing it to a patron, she drowns it herself. Harker in the King's Coffin usually keeps some fire kelp extract on hand for special purposes. Be careful when dealing with that one. Why do I need to get a rotten hagfish and not a regular hagfish? The goal is to make him vomit, remember? A rotting hagfish produces a special oil once it reaches a certain level of decay. Noted. And why didn't you try Andre's bile earlier? I did tell you the list of ingredients, eh? He'll have stuff dribbling out of both ends for a week. Maybe two, if he's really unlucky. Show me what you've got. So, you have all sorts of drinks. I don't think I really need any at the moment. But thank you very much. There goes the captain. I think that's the curtain who blew out Benny the Oh boy. Ooh, are you a bounty person? You carry yourself like a person well acquainted with violence. Care to put your skills to use for a good cause? And some coin? Hmm? She dances a coin across her knuckles, mirth a bright glint in her eyes. Tell me about the cause you mentioned. It's simple enough. The firebrand commanded by Captain Henkwa once plagued the Deadfire. The skill and brutality of Henkwa's crew was the stuff of legends. Dessaral flicks the coin she's holding and snatches it from the air with a grin. Up close, it's clearly a swollenette. Legendary nightmares, more like. After how they did the crew with a virtuous reward. Even that bastard Benwith wanted nothing to do with them. But pirate legends don't live long. Some months ago, an alliance of Neketaka pirate hunters managed to corner the Firebrand, 
and sinker off the coast of Tikawara. They confirmed Captain Henkwa's death, but her senior crew members escaped unscathed. And now it seems like bringing the Firebrand's crew to justice doesn't matter to anyone but me. Even in the low light, you can see a vein throbbing at her temple. Her voice drops to a low growl. So I want you to kill them. And I'll pay you out of my own pocket if you do. Sounds like you've got a grudge against the Firebrand's crew. It's nothing personal. The crew earned their reputation through murder and thievery. And it would make me sick to see them regain an ounce of their power. She tries for a nonchalant shrug, but it comes off looking like she's got a sore shoulder instead. As she speaks, Deseral removes a small swollenette from her pocket and polishes the surface with a corner of her shirt. Her features soften like she's visiting an old memory. Then she stuffs the coin back in her pocket with a barely audible sigh. You're not telling me ev everything. Did they kill a flame of yours? You've a keen eye, my friend. I reserve a bit of the Firebrand story for myself, and you'll excuse me if I don't plan to share it. Let's keep business strictly business, huh? All right, then. I'll hunt down those pirates. Who am I looking for? The Firebrand had a mascot. A useless little bastard. Who's taken to calling himself Lord Admiral Imp. He's not terribly dangerous on his own, but he's keen to make a nuisance of himself wherever he goes. Last I heard, Lord Admiral Imp was making himself comfortable in Queen's birth. You'll find him there with a few Zarops and constructs, the little buggers convinced to follow him. Bless their simple hearts. I see. Who's next on your list? You'll be taking down Lady Ipiro, Captain Henkwa's former first mate and a rumored lover. She's a cipher. And a dangerous one at that. Epero maintains an estate in Serpent's Crown in Neketaka. But I wouldn't recommend you rush in Marzal's blasting and swords held high. She keeps a number of bodyguards on her payroll. Got it. You'll be going after Katren, the Firebrand's resident wizard. Rumor has it she was once an apprentice to Arkemir before turning pirate. Last I heard, Katren and her sundry little minions could be found lazing about the sacred stair here in Neketaka at night. No idea where she disappears off to during the day. And who's the last target? I have a challenge for you, my friend. And his name is Torkar, leader of the Firebrand's boarding parties. He's an ogre with a reputation for cleverness and cruelty both. I've even heard tell it was Torkar who was behind the Firebrand's most successful tactics, not Henkwa. Torkar was last seen at Lifter's refuge here in Dunwich. They're set on joining a crew, or assembling his own. I trust you won't let that happen. Alright, farewell then. Hunting. Well, it is bounties and I gladly take bounties. Alright. Berna, you are a merchant. You might sell what I'm looking for. There's no hope. Repeat customer. What can I stop you up with today? Do you have any unripened palm stones? Of course I do. But they're no good to eat when they're not ripe. We'll make you sick so long as they're purple, aye. Tell you what, though. I'll still sell you what I got. Just don't eat them till they're brown. Sure. Let's see. Uh... There it is. Thank you. Oh, this looks like it'll be fun. The artistic quality of the stage's backdrop is best described as, uh, enthusiastic. Hey, Yoshi. Let me drop a save, but he's- they've got ships on their head. Let me drop a save here, because I have a feeling this could be fun. Alright, let's see about this play. That was a disaster of epic proportions, if ever I directed one. Arms flailing wildly before her, the stage performer shoes the other actors from the set. A typhoon couldn't have cleared out our audience faster. Who are you guys? Oh, of course you haven't heard of us. Like I needed more proof that we're talentless hacks. Her shoulders slump, but then she seems to regain herself, chin up as she answers you. We're the peg-leg performers. Formerly the Seabird Serenaders, formerly the Jacks Finnegan First Ensemble of Dunnage. Oh boy. But now, well... She tunnels her fingers through her hair and sighs. My troops coming apart at the seams. We're short on cash, we're low on people, and we've run plumb dry on enthusiasm. She ticks the points on her fingers. We haven't drawn a decent crowd in more than a fortnight. And it ain't like pirates are hard to please. That's how you know the show really stinks. Oof. But I think I know what the problem is. 
We've got a lack of flair. If only I could hire more talented performers. I just know my play would take off. What's your play about? Only the biggest thing to hit the dead fire since the Valian Trading Company started hunting us like sea hounds. Is it the Rawatayans? I'm talking about Aethus storming through the archipelago and capsizing nearly a whole fleet of our ships. You know what? That's a good point. I should have said Aethus and not the Rawatayans. <laughs> what would you need to improve the play? And no, I'm not going to drag a giant green colossus back over here to for your play. A better Aethus, for one. I'm the tallest one in our troop. I'm still not very convincing, even when I bother to dye my skin blue. Why do I have an idea? Also, our special stage effects aren't all that special anymore. We had someone for that role, but she got herself into debt and has a new job at the King's Coffin. I'll help you. Really? Well, that's great. Then we could... Abruptly, her eyes narrow, her dark brows furrowing with heavy suspicion. Wait a tick. Why would you help me? What do you get out of this? I don't see anyone else helping you, do you? Right. Beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. She strokes one of her bushy eyebrows thoughtfully. I'm in desperate need of two more performers. A wizard for one, plus any oaf big enough to pose as Aethus. I happen to know a wizard of the finest skill set who already performs here in Dunwich, Tayana, at the King's Coffin. But unfortunately, I got no idea of where we might find a suitable Aethus. Get me the right people for the parts, and I promise you'll be pleased with your investment. I'll turn us a profit or die trying. Sure, and I think I already have an idea who I can provide for the, uh, for Aethus. Anyway. I'm telling you, ask for Irwina in the King's Coffin. She we have a stray stars. dog here. Hemp. Hemp, what do you do? Plus one constitution and a bonus to fortitude. Oh, right, and we do have this, uh, this girdle and this cloak. Let's see, the girdle... Uh, the one we have is better, I think. So I can give this to you. Can't occupy that slot. Oh! Oh, because that was a ring. Uh... You have the healing. I guess I can give it to you. And I'll give you the cloak of protect- no. Oh. Do you have a cloak? Yeah, you've got a cloak of protection. I'll give this one to you. There you go. Mastered sot. She's got to be 90 years old. Let's see. The shelf contains current navigational charts and bestiaries about the various sea monsters a captain could encounter. The labels on these bottles are to be believed. These concoctions cure everything from scurvy to death itself. Ramasso, who are you? Welcome to my emporium. Whatever you need, I sell. Uh, what would you like to buy today? You own all of these stalls. I do now. <laughs> I started out with only one stall and eventually branched out, buying out my competitors one by one. Monopolies, yay. Show me what you have for sale. Ooh, unique items. Let's see. Pale Hide, a legendary light armor. Legend. Oh, that is actually the best level of armor you can get. Plus three shock armor and freeze armor rating, and hits converted to grazes. Okay. Eager Blade, you are an S-stock. No one here uses an S-stock. Scoring a crit gains accuracy and action speed. Ooh. And scoring a hit on someone who's near death also damages nearby enemies. Also good. And Amra, a battle axe. Got a lot of abilities here. It's exceptional, bonus crit damage. Requires two hands to wield, but deals increased damage. 25% chance on scoring a kill to frenzy the wielder. Okay. And if the wielder's might is 25 or above, critical hits with this weapon cause 25% of base weapon damage in an area around the wielder. Holy shit, this is powerful. What are the enchanting abilities? Riven Gore. Enemies under 50 health are killed instantly. Jesus Christ. 33% of base weapon damage in an area... Oh, it's 33% instead of 25%. Or upgrade temper. Without a deflection penalty. Or 
1% chance on receiving damage to Frenzy. Amra is really freaking powerful, I have to say. Not that any of our guys use it. Still, very impressive, I the will say. The Watcher is a regular ship hunter's ship hunter. Aye. Anyone who kills that many Valian trading bastards is a right. Mind? Yeah, I've killed some. Alright, more loot. Coel Marcellos. The first thing you notice about this man is the nature of his attire. Loud and clashing reds and purples, bright as a peacock. On second glance, you see that he's tall and lanky, boyishly handsome in an unkempt way, with a trim beard and a friendly smile. He hums a little tune to himself as he watches the passers-by. My good lady, hello! He gives you a frightfully cheery wave and beckons you closer. Whatever might I do for you? Tell me about yourself. I'm certain there's no need to tell you. Observant as you know dot are that I am... an actor. He says the last bit with a flourish and takes an extravagant bow. Stage, tavern, street corner. They are as much my home as where I lay my head at night. So, I travel Aora, looking for opportunities to share my gifts with the grateful masses, wherever that may lead me. You make a lot of money doing that? Oh, goodness, yes, loads of it. I've been known to joke that I'm less a man than I am a walking bank for all the coin that I carry. Is that really the wisest thing to say when you're in an island filled with pirates? The common folk do so love an actor. We bring mystery and excitement to their otherwise dreary lives. Yes, you could say we're doing the gods' work. Why do I have a feeling this guy has only ever had roles as an extra? As he speaks, you notice that the toes of his soft boots are worn thin. A closer inspection reveals that his robes are unraveling at the hems and are well patched at the elbows, too. You're broke, aren't you? How dare you! But you're not wrong, to my great chagrin. Times have been tough of late, what with the giant statue smashing up the place, and few in the dead fire have coin to spare besides. It's quite difficult, you know, living as I do. On occasion, foolish folk will take my act for reality. I've thrice been run out of a town for impersonating a foreign dignitary. Damned fools don't understand the blistering wit of my satire, I tell you. You're a comedian too, then. I had to learn to protect myself as a result. Though, I must admit, what martial skills I've got aren't of use for much more than fighting off wolves. Or throttling a thief with designs on my satchel. Thank the gods, I hardly ever need to use them. I can talk myself out of nearly anything, you know. Well, you sure can talk, I'll give you that. Well, thank you. I must say it's gratifying to be recognized for one's talents. All things being equal, I'd much rather recite a sonnet than swing an axe. But a man's gotta make his way in the world any way he can. Can you teach me what you've learned in your travels as a performer? I would be honored. But a man needs to make a living, you know. So, for my services, how about... 3,000 copper? Well, I could use the bluff and streetwise boost, so here you go. Fantastic! Let's get to it, then. His training is... idiosyncratic. He starts by describing a character he'd like you to play. A street tough, an embittered sailor, a noble in the throes of a tantrum. Then he recites lines to you, asking that you recite them back in the attitude of your character. He then shows you how to use those characters to trick people into giving you what you want. When you show him you've got it, he gives you a wide smile and bids you farewell. Cole's training. How delightful. My old captain was a drinker from the He was born to the day he died. The treasure trove. Always he was railed Hold on, thin. you're speaking. He wound up with a wooden leg. Twenty-six ships and a bilious fever. Sunrise is a world, doves. The coming horizon is a sea-sized ruin. Pirate cuts a glance to the side and a bout of jaunty music rack rackets up. She bobs her head to the beat. They sail on the gilded brigs. Go ahead, we'll watch. Put down anchor, breed, and don't loot so much. But when should we lot? Where and how could we settle? 
drink some more, doves, and you may sober up, sinking Aora's last ship three stars before the burning. The morning is a blight, lovesome. The morrow is a pus-filled boil. Don't quit your day job, lady. I hope you like my set. As I said, don't quit your day job. The treasure trove. What do we got in here? Sounds like it might be a store or something. Okay. Leave it to me. Oil paintings, perfect for captains with drab cavern taverns uh, cabins. Welcome to the treasure trove, sailor. A strapping godlike blinks between the swollen, crusty tumors lining her eyes. Her lips crack, weeping a, savvy sup a sappy substance as she speaks. Anything in my trove catches your eye, you let me know. All right. All right, let's see what you got. Ooh. Sun and moon, a one-handed flail. Uh, legendary. Arcing blows, 10% of graze is converted to hits. Hits twice, but with reduced damage. And Celestial Attunement. During the day, a wielder increase, receives increased power level for fire attacks, and during the night, it's frost attacks. Very interesting. We've got our Legendary Rapier. Cannot be flanked. Impressive. Grand Squid's Escape. Breaks engagement and expertly avoids the next attack. Okay. And Kalmos Curse. Kalmoy's lingering resentment inflicts major da defense penalties to nearby allies against intellect afflictions. Ooh. Well, you can break the curse, at least. Rekvu's strained, stained grasps. Grants death denied. Wearer is immune to constitution afflictions while they carry one or more injuries. Interesting, but no thanks. Mirror back. 10% chance to reflect spells. And... Extra deflection against ranged weapons and stealth. Okay, that's a decent thing. Opal Tear Cameo. Summons a Siren. Void Ward. Low raw damage, uh, less raw damage taken, and Corrode Armor Rating. Not bad. Then we have a bunch of potions and things. Iridescent Scale. Superb Medium Armor. Extra defense against elemental attacks. And you can conjure a greater blight. Can lower corrode or shock. And lower burn or freeze. That's interesting. Alright, you got some interesting things there. Let's take a look down here. Sure. Despite appearances, these sacks of luminous Audra contain only brightly colored sand. No sweat. Just to unlock it for the XP. There, done. The, this gilded armor is ceremonial in nature and of no real and of no use in a real battle. All right, that seems to be everything there. Well, we still have some time, and we have a few places we need to stop to try and complete a few quests. First things first. Let's go to Lifter's Refuge. I think we have a few things we can pick up here. Let's see. What do you reckon you did to earn Helia's charm? Cause it sure wasn't from potential for this life. None of us did anything to deserve a charm. Do not be naive. It is hardly a gift. Well, I need to check things around here. I did check these before, but it's still worth it to take a look. Oh, I found the big guy we gotta look for. Barkami, you! Have a pity and toss me a pyre, will you? Hey, Barkami, how would you feel about playing the part of Aethys on stage? What? I'm no actor. And besides, I can't barely see nothing as it is. You'll just need to speak a few lines, stand there, and look intimidating. Intimidating I can do. Reciting a bunch of namby-pamby lines is going to be the trickier part, but I'm game to try he sighs as he straightens his spine, standing even taller to tower over you. Turn me in the right direction, and I'll make me way to the Radiant Court. 
Okay, that's solved. I'm not seeing a barrel with what I'm looking for in here. Have I not taken any? I could have sworn I did. Oh, we have a rotten hagfish. I guess I already picked it up. That said, it looks like I got a fight on my hands over here for this bounty. Let me drop a save first. All right, Torkar. Puny. Too puny to join my crew. Arms crossed, the hulking ogre looks you from head to toe. He spits at your feet, unimpressed. Go away. Be gone. Scram. What's an ogre doing in Dunnage? As I said, I seek bodies for a crew. And no, you cannot join. Well, I'm afraid there's a bounty on you. It is kind of you to announce yourself to me, bounty hunter. It will be just as kind of you to die by my hand. Let the fight begin. Not exactly what I want you to cast. I have better ideas. How about this? Yeah, that'll get some of them out. Oh, he's these guys are tough. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. It's a good thing I did just save because uh, this guy is actually tough. Very, very tough. Keep doing what you can. I should have had our guys focus on someone because this is not going to go well. Yeah, this is going quite poorly. I mean, that would be a good shot. Go for it. Yeah, that's some, uh, some damaging. Okay, the good news is you took care of one of them. How about you come here and work on finishing off the rest of these while you still can? Looks like Torkar is almost down. So that's a plus. Okay, Torkar is down. I think we can get this. Oh, the, I never noticed that guy, that archer up there. This is futile. Uh, do you mind just finishing off this wolf, this wolf companion, please? That's it. Okay. We are going to be able to pass through this, but not without having taken quite a beating. Quite a beating. Jeez. Okay, you two can finish off the sharpshooter. And one more sharpshooter to finish off. You can go around here. Get Basically out of healing abilities. And we're good. Okay. That was a little brutal. What can I, do? I mean, we got through it, but that was brutal. Yeesh. Oh. Oh, I accidentally hit a button I shouldn't have. Torkar's map fragment. This piece of tattered parchment shows the familiar waters and land masses of the Deadfire Archipelago, but without the other pieces, it's impossible to tell where it points or how to get there. A note is scribbled in the margins. I entrust this fragment to you, brilliant friend, with every confidence that you won't fail to safeguard it. Enjoy your riches on the appointed day. Yours in affection, Captain Henqua. Hmm. And the Maker's Own Power. Grant's ability upon becoming near death, reforge the flesh. The wearer transforms into a stationary pillar of steel, reducing incoming damage and restoring health. 
plus plus one might and crush armor rating. That's actually pretty darn good. Uh huh. Okay then. Well, um, I think I'm gonna have to end this episode here. I'm pretty sure I can't assemble the map. Yeah, I don't have all the parts, but I kind of need to end this episode here. Next episode, we'll go finish off the rest of the stuff I have to do in, in this area. And, uh, yeah, that should be good. Till then, I am Chester44, I'll send in his fly. That is Laniara, Palagina, Jolti, Seraphin, and Aloth. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. And I shall see you all next time.